in composing my sermon today, I found that the original title that I had selected no longer fit quite as well. You'll find that in the bulletin, the sermon is called Trusted. In its final form, it is called Lasts. God's faithful love lasts forever. I'm going to ruin the punchline here, because that's the whole of my sermon today. I'm going to say it again quite a few times this morning. Learn to hear it. Learn to hear it with ears that hear beyond the present tumult. Learn to see it with eyes that are open to God's working in the world. Learn to trust it with a heart that rests on God's promises. God's faithful love lasts forever. In the days of Abraham, when God was first choosing a people for himself, God's chosen people, in the days of his sons of Isaac and of Jacob, the family of Abraham saw wonders untold. A child born to an old and barren couple a son rescued by a caring God, a man wrestling with angels. They saw miracles of dreams and visions. They saw salvation in a time of famine. They saw wonders unbelievable. And in that time, God's people learned to say, God's faithful love lasts forever. In the days of Moses, when God led the people out of Egypt, when the people groaned in oppression under the whips of their slave masters and grumbled in discomfort in the desert, when they bowed down to idols and cried out against God's leading, when they wandered, lost for a whole generation in the desert, when they were forced to eat manna from the earth and drink only water, when they hungered for more nourishing fare, not knowing the wonders of God's gift to them already, when these people were in the desert and in slavery, they learned to say with their forefathers, God's faithful love lasts forever. In the days of the prophets, when princes and merchants and kings of Israel turned their backs on God's commandments, when the poor were oppressed and beaten and driven about by the wealthy and the powerful, when the needy were traded for blankets and for sandals and the wealthy ate up their increase, when the priests turned against the people and against God's will and bled the people dry of all their resources, when the nations ringed them round, clamoring at the gates of the city, threatening destruction on the temple and on all that God's people had worked for. And yea, even in the exile, even when those nations broke down gates and walls and dragged away leaders, the people of Israel learned to say, God's faithful love lasts forever. In the days of Christ, when a distant emperor demanded the money and worship the people of Israel, when bandits and false prophets roamed the land, bringing chaos and confusion, when learned men placed the people under mighty burdens of law, and all Israel and all the world groaned under the boot of Rome, when all Israel and all the world groaned under the weight of of sin, when Christ came to set people free and to heal their illnesses, when Christ gave sight to the blind and speech to the dumb, when Christ fed the hungry and loved the brokenhearted, when Christ was killed for his claim to power and authority. Then God's people learned to say, God's faithful love lasts forever. the moments through history of the bleakest despair in the life of the people of God. When Jeremiah spoke to a broken nation, defeated and exiled, he said this, proclaiming to a people frightened and lost and lone the word of the Lord. I know the plans that I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans 
for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. To a people whose leaders were in captivity, to a people whose hearts and wills were broken, to a people searching for any sign of God's love anywhere in the universe for them, he said, Know the plans that I have in mind for you. They are plans for peace, not disaster. To give you a future filled with hope. God's faithful love lasts forever. Christ told this parable. It's two parables to his disciples and followers that evening at dinner. Funny little story about sheep and coins. Talks about a shepherd who leaves 99% of his livestock in the pasture, about whom he feels no fear or anxiety, to find the one sheep that has gone missing. It's a funny little story about a woman who searches the whole of her house, every nook and cranny, knowing full well that she has 90% of the money that she had before, not tempted to spend it on any idle pleasure, to forget her troubles, but no, sweeping through the whole house, every corner, every secret place, for one fraction of her treasures, seeking always to find the one that is missing. That is the depth in funny little story form of God's love and care for the lost and the lonely. A ceaseless, relentless searching, an untiring, unwavering devotion, a faithful love that lasts forever. Make no mistake, my friends. We're the sheep. Not the 99 in the fold. The one in the wilderness. We are the coin hiding under the end table. If we were not, if we were perfect and righteous in all ways, God would have no need to pursue us. No need to chase us down. But God's infinite love for us will not permit our endless error. God will pursue us, will find us, will gather us up, and will take us home. God's faithful love lasts forever. When the trumpet blasts, and the siren sounds, when the winds rise up and the rain clouds sweep over the mountains, when we grieve a searing loss, when our hearts are full of fear and anxiety, and we look to the horizon and the road is broken and the sun is dead and we see no hope, the promise remains. Sure as the sunrise, certain as spring, God's faithful love lasts forever. No matter the burden, no matter the fear, no matter the despair, God will not give up on us. No matter our wandering, no matter our errors, no matter our sins, God will not give up on us. No matter the price, no matter the cause, no matter the life of a son that has been yielded up, God has not given up on us. Rest, my friends. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be fearful. From the rising into the setting sun, God's faithful love lasts forever. Amen. Our hymn of response for the day is number 318 in the old... Hymns of the Living Church, if you're uh, new, to, new to our family of faith, yeah, they're right there in the, at the ends of the pews.
Number 318, they have it listed as when we walk with the Lord. I grew up singing it as trust and obey. 